your microphone on and I'm loading up my um, yep yeah, uh, yeah, YouTube laptop laptop oh dear can't get my words out hold on I'll just get myself set up um, okay uh, microphone going on yeah Click on my video, turn the volume off. Sorry about this, wasn't quite prepared. No. Right, microphone's on, straighten that up again. Okay, John's here. Hey, John, thanks for joining me. I'm guessing being a weekday afternoon, we're not going to see too many people, but I really wanted to smell these perfumes that I've just had through the door. Uh, Nisky Pisky's here. Hi, Nisky Pisky. Let's just slightly change that there. So, uh, let me know what you're wearing. John says, afternoon, they'll, afternoon, they'll be the best. <laughs> Light of Joy says, hello, Claire. Hey, Light of Joy. So, yes, I've got a good selection of at least six things to smell. John's wearing Swedoft Bohemian. I am scent free at the moment. I'm not that long out the shower and I've been running around and I haven't quite got to spray anything on, which is good. So it means I can try some of these perfumes on skin and maybe choose one for my main scent. So they are mostly gourmands, but not all of them. I don't know, you, you, I don't think you class all of them as gourmands, but they're, they're very much my style of perfume. Light of Joy is wearing Mongolan Eau de Parfum because I was, I want extra snuggles from my daughter, her favourite. Well, that's lovely. Nisky Pisky still has cheaper cyan from yesterday. I'm still lying in bed. Nothing wrong with that. I had quite the lie-in this morning, actually. Love a lie-in. Um... Right, so yeah, I'm wearing nothing. I don't even have a drink or a snack. Probably should have sorted that out. Not a snack, because I don't like eating on camera. No, like the noise of eating. Who wants that? Nom, nom, nom. Oh no. Oh no, couldn't have that. I've got some fragrances out to film my most worn winter perfumes. Okay, right. So... Before I do anything else, it would just be wrong to not say something about Carlos. I'm sure you all know that we lost the Brooklyn Fragrance Lover and I, I'm shocked. Um, I was really shocked when it came up in the group chat uh, a couple of days ago, wasn't it? And I bet Carlos wherever he is, is right now, is full of love for the outpouring of love that has come out for him, which is completely deserved. Um, so I just wanted to say that. I don't want to dwell on it. Obviously, if you want to say something, the floor is yours. But um, I just can't just talk about perfume and not mention this massive dent that's been put in our community, this uh, huge crevice that's been left by... Carlos leaving us. So I'm just saying that um, we never met in person. I felt absolutely certain that I was going to meet Carlos. I, I knew it. I was so certain. He joined me on a live stream uh, last year and he was an absolute pleasure to have on the channel. And we've exchanged messages over the years. He's invited me on collaborations and he's. Um, yeah, he's just massively going to be missed. So I just wanted to say that. And then I'm going to try and cheer up. And we will get on with talking about perfume. Um, Light of Joy says it's devastating to the community. Uh, the Mansky is here. Hi, Mansky. It says it feel, still feels unreal. It does. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. Like, I literally could not believe it. John says, very sad news, big loss. Hugs Claire, pair, he's leaving a big, cuddly, lovely hole. Yeah. Light of Joy says, he was so warm and kind, aside from being a fantastic reviewer. JC Russell says, good morning, how are you doing today? Yeah, okay, thanks JC. 
Um, John says not to be mushy, but in another life. Yeah, who knows? I mean, we all have our different beliefs and stuff, but I believe that you don't just disappear. So I like to think that maybe there's little bits of Carlos floating around in the in the world around us. Um, the artist formerly known as David G says Carlos was certainly one of the most genuine fragrance reviewers of out there. Despite how big his channel got, he will be missed by many. He was very down to earth. I'm seeing lots of lots of new reviewers, small um, small reviewers, new people on the block, and they're all saying that he he was kind to them. He was generous. He reached out to them. He spoke to them. Yeah, really sad loss. Um, Yara's here. She's saying hi, hi Yara. So yeah, okay. Well, I'm gonna move on to talk about perfumes. So uh, what I have here are a selection of decants that I bought from a fragrance friend, uh, Asia. Thank you, Asia, if you watch this. She runs one of the Facebook groups over on uh, Facebook. Uh, and one of the UK or UK and um, Europe sites, I can't remember. Uh, she's uh, very well known and has been for years and years. And I was looking to try quite a few different things and I expected to, to need to buy samples from loads of different people because I didn't expect one person to have pretty much everything I was looking to try. Well, Asia pretty much did. I really wanted to try Lancome's Potetra which is, it comes in one of those lovely bottles like Lavender's Trianon Oud Bouquet, comes in a bottle like that. I don't know if it's the same line or not though. Potetra, I know Karine from Olfactive Stories. Is that right, Olfactive Stories? I always mix up Olfactive Files, Tara and Karine. So yeah, it's Olfactive Stories, Karine. Uh, she talked about Potetra. She's, she was quite disappointed with it. But I still really wanted to try it because I, I, I want to fall in love with one of those Lancomes because I really love the bottles. <laughs> so that's Petetra. We'll be smelling that in a minute. Um, Niski Piskie, talking about Carlos. I didn't know him personally, but always thought the next time I went to New York, I'd ask him to have a coffee with me. I felt he would. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's funny, isn't it? He was just so such a big personality that you, you just so warm and um and inviting and you just I just felt certain out of all of um, the people that are far away you know that you know that they're not going to be that easy to actually meet with but I really felt sure that one day I'd meet Carlos well I might just have to wait a little while longer and I'll meet him in the sky so uh, we've got here Reminiscence Drague. So Drague, and I might not be saying that quite right, is a, a sugared almond, I think. Yeah, I think it's one of those hard-coated sugared almonds. So Drague by Reminiscence. And we've got from the same company, Grimoire, for Grim, Grimove or Grimoire. And that is the marshmallow scent. And then we have, I've got two from Miller Harris. This is called Poirier, Poirier d'une soir, pair of an evening. <laughs> um, oh, bug, I just dropped one, one second. Mm. Okay, um, so evening pair, pair of the evening. So a pear fragrance, yay. <laughs> And we've got Sublime Blossom or Sublime Blossom from Miller Harris. This is currently in TK Maxx. So four bottles are, I think, you can get $24.99 for the 50 mil, $34.99 for the 100 mil. And it's getting a lot of love in one of the Facebook groups where everyone went and bought one because of the bargain price and uh, someone say, or a couple of people saying that it was an amazing fragrance once you get past the opening. So apparently the opening is a bit harsh, or not to everyone's taste, but then the dry down, and people are now receiving their bottles and talking about it. And they're all agreeing that the dry down is, is very, very nice. So I'm really curious to try Sublime Blossom. I don't think it's really gonna come under gourmand category, but even so. And then finally, the one that I do know 
is Bois d'Armond, and that's from Van Cleef and Arpels. I have reviewed this from, I had a couple of samples of it, and I was on the fence, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to buy a bottle, and I definitely wasn't going to pay full retail because it does come up a little bit cheaper here and there. And then I decided I'd get another decant. I don't really need a full bottle at the moment. And then by the time I've used that up, I will know whether I need it or not. So Bois d'Armond Woods of Almond. Um, we'll get back to that one as well in a minute. Um, fragrance phrase is here. Scotland signing in. Hey, fragrance phrase. Good to see you. Um, John says, Kareen is the Lancome queen. Yes, definitely. So we're going to just get into testing these. Uh, so I'm going to try Protectra on skin. No, that's not it. Uh, I'm going to try Protectra from Lancome on skin. Because I think it's an, if I recall, it's an irisy lipstick kind of fragrance. I could be wrong because I haven't looked up the notes in a while. Um, and I haven't looked them up in advance. So I don't know what they are. I might, if I have to, I'll look them up. If anyone feels like looking them up and posting them in the comments, feel free. Patetra, I, I think it's a remake of, they, there was, there. You, if you search for it, there is a vintage bottles of Patetra sometimes online. Uh, but this is the current version. So we're just gonna, we'll just check, there's nothing. Sometimes you shower, but it doesn't get rid of previous perfumes. My skin smells sweet. <laughs> I'm just so used to, I've always got sweet perfumes on. This is maybe just the merest hint of something left, but I'm just going to chuck this on here. I think it'll be fine. So good three sprays there. In the air, I can smell something. Pop that out the way. I'll give it a mo. Um, Rich is here. He says, hell. Hello, Rich. Um, and Trace is here says hello hi Claire and everyone hey Tracy good to see you and Mary Beth as well I love the bottles that they're in yes the Lancome uh, is it House of Lang what are they called uh, Maison Lancome yeah Maison Lancome the bottles that I love them I absolutely love them so Patetra in I'm smelling it in the air it's, it's quite nice it does smell like it's it's a lipsticky kind of scent but one of those clean, maybe aldehyde type scents as well, like um, wash, you might say it smells a little bit like washing detergent or softener, a slightly violet, so, sort of like a violet and iris, smooth, creamy lotion with a hint of something savoury. Not sure what that is. There's a hint of something savoury at the same time as a hint of something sweet. So whether there's a touch of a herb in there to just to savoury things up a tiny, tiny bit. And whether there's a little bit of a, a tiny bit of vanilla as well, I wouldn't be surprised. And there's a floral element too. I can't, I really don't know, but there might be a little bit of rose. It smells a little bit like rose, violet and iris. But clean, creamy. I wouldn't exactly say soapy, but that aldehyde creaminess that you can sometimes get that's very clean. Actually, I quite like that at the moment. So we'll see what happens with that. And... We'll try it. Which one do you want me to put on my skin next? Uh, I've got Reminiscence Grimoire, which is marshmallow, or the Sugared Almond one. Um, hey Mia. And Nick is here. Hello from Greece. Hey Nick. Or uh, we could do the pear one from Miller Harris. I think I should probably put the pear on my skin, shouldn't I? So I'm kind of known, kind of known as... Um, is enjoying a bit of a pear note. So I'm going to just pop that up here. So I've got the Pertetra here. I'll pop the pear up here as far away from the wrist as possible. Poirier d'une soir from Miller Harris. 
So like on my, maybe on my fingers and then my knuckles, more so than the back of my hand. Whoa. Okay. I can smell that in the air. Don't you hate it when people go, okay. Okay, I am, I'm getting a bit of a hit of Ambroxan. I'm smelling pear, but I'm smelling quite a big hit of Ambroxan at the same time. Which in turn reminds me of La Belle, which I happen to have here. Not that it smells the same as La Belle, but La Belle always smells to me like it's got some Ambroxan in the mix with the pear. But this doesn't have as much sweetness. I mean, that is, La Belle is, is very sugary. It's extremely sugary. And then you have the vanilla as well, which adds sweetness, but in a different way. Whereas this, the pear is a little bit sugary, actually. Not a pear drop sweet note. It's a more natural smelling pear. But it does smell sugary. And then you have that thing that Ambroxan does, which is kind of like a, a woody, powdery, at least kind of like gritty, powdery, you know, um, it's textured, not exactly powder, more texture. Almost adding a, a smoky element or, a, and it doesn't smell like smoke, but a hint at smoke, like a nod towards smoke. When I smell Ambroxan, I see a I see a colour, and it's like a pale terracotta. So imagine like terracotta tiles, and you ground them down, and maybe they were sat in the sun. They're a bit faded, and then you ground them down, and you powdered. That's the, that's how I how I see Ambroxan in fragrances. I I can't explain it. That's just what I see, and and I smell that in here. And let's see, Rich is saying he's wearing Queers by Cana Barcelona. And Liz is here. Hello, I'm just catching the end now. Nope, uh, kind of just really starting. We've only got two fragrances on at the moment. Valadina's here. She says, hi, Claire, I made it. Hey, Valadina. And right, right now, Mia, this is a Poirier Dune Soir, which is by Miller Harris. It's a pear fragrance. Poirier Dune Soir. Yeah. Um, it wasn't what I was expecting. I guess, even though it's called Dune Soir, which means evening, and I guess it's aiming to be an evening fragrance, I didn't expect it to... I think I still expected it to be more fresher and lighter. I didn't expect it to have this kind of smokiness. It's a similar note that I've been picking out recently in different fragrances. So it's in By the Fire Side, By the Fireplace. It's in Demi's fragrance, Minuet et Demi. It's like a sweet sort of smoky note. And I think it's in Delina, although I only smelled the clone, but in the clone is quite a strong note again which is the same as this so there's a common component it's very popular at the moment in fragrance that i'm getting in this and to my nose it's kind of dominating i'd like the pear to be a little more bigger but i think it's i do think there's quite a bit of ambroxan in here and that's unfortunately that's getting in the way for me of really picking out too much else. But it smells good, it does smell good. But for me it's just too much of that. Whether it's ambroxan, please don't sue me if I'm wrong Miller Harris, whether it's ambroxan or a different or a, a combination of, of, of certain um, materials. I won't say aroma chemicals because they might not be, might be natural, they might be naturals as well. But for me, it does smell kind of aroma chemically. Um, I think this would be really popular. I think a lot of people will like this. It's just, it's just not quite to my taste. So, which is good because I was almost gonna blind buy this one. 
Oh, Corrine's here. Hi there, I'm still working, but I listen to you. Hey, Corrine, I tried Protectra. I've got it on my wrist. It's quite nice, actually. Um, I know you're, you're very disappointed with it, but... Yes, but I probably wouldn't buy it. Unfortunately, it's not that amazing. Um, it's a, a musky, clean, creamy, slightly sweet, slightly makeup-y, slightly laundry detergent scent. So I can understand why you would be underwhelmed with it. But I quite, I like it. I like the scent profile of it. I prefer it to Poirier d'une Soir, which just has a little too much smoky, dry, woodsy stuff going on. I can smell the pear. The pear has got this lovely fresh greenness to it. Could almost, could be apple, could be pear. You know, it's not even blatantly pear, but quite fresh. But it's not, it's over dominated. It's over, it's overcast by the dry, sweet, woodsy elements. Jimbo's here. He says, hi, Claire and all. Liz is testing Architects Club today. It's so similar to Angelique Noir. It's funny, I was thinking, I mean, it's been a long time since I tried both of these, but I would have compared Architects Club to Queer Beluga. Let me know what you think about that. But I do think the Latte Matier line from Galan, all, all the sweet ones have quite a lot in common. So the the kind of fragrance, you don't, you don't need to own that many from the line because you kind of get that beautiful vanilla in most of them. Mia says, hope everyone's doing well and keeping warm. Um, Margie's here, a little under the weather, but I'm listening in. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you feel better soon, Margie. So we've got two fragrances on this hand. We're gonna go now and um, we'll try something else. So I think we'll just go randomly then and we'll do Grimoire or Grimauve, uh, Grimoire, I'm not sure how you say it, I'm sorry Corinne, Corinne, how do we, how do we say Grim, Grimoire, the word for marshmallow in French? Um, so this is by Reminiscence, uh, these fragrances every now and then they do get a little bit of love from uh, reviewers or people generally just talking in, in groups and things as gourmands and I was really curious and they're very affordable. Sometimes I find these kind of fragrances very linear but I heard some reviews that actually they're not that linear so that's why I really wanted to try it. Um, yeah so Grim Grimove, Grimove. <laughs> Um, Rox says, I've stepped away from gourmands as I've wanted something more bright and cheery after this long lockdown, but watching your live stream is going to tempt me. <laughs> Maybe. I was definitely there for a long time, uh, Rox, mostly wearing quite fresh and light fragrances. But recently, now we've had snow and ice, I have been reaching for my heavier, richer fragrances. Truth Within says, I caved in and ordered some uh, Bath and Body Works Gourmand Body Sprays a few days ago for, hang on, the comments are going too quickly, hang on, uh, for a, a V-Day treat for myself, chocolate covered cherry, raspberry jam, donut and coconut cream pie plus strawberry pound cake, free wicked candles, they sound uh, amazing, yeah. Uh, Le marshmallow, <laughs> that's right John, that's how we say it in French, Le marshmallow. Um, green Jimove, 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 Jimove. Danielle, have you tried Madeleine by Mask Milano? Uh, no, I haven't. I really want to. Uh, Mia has. Mia, Mia did a review on it. Uh, Rich says, Guimove. Lizzie says, Queer Beluga for me is is far more suede, whereas Angelique Noir shares a green Angelica I can smell in Architects Club, but yes, that soft, luxurious vanilla is definitely present in many of the line. Uh, Yara says, G-Mauve, G-Mauve. <laughs> um, 
ghee like the butter gimolve gimolve <laughs> now i don't know who's 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 right who's wrong who's guessing <laughs> Rhonda says like do re mi fa gimove gimave gimav gimave oh my goodness and uh, tara's here she says hey all i'm on lunch hey tara um okay i now, now <laughs> Karine has said perfect, but I don't know which, which version, which attempt you're saying I was perfect at. Um, maybe you can send me a voice, send me a voice note on Instagram how, with how you say it. Right, this is in, this is the marshmallow fragrance, marshmallow in French. <laughs> on the back of my hand. Gimauve. Yeah, Gimauve. Yeah, I was saying it with a gr, but it's not, is it? It's G, it's G U. Oh, I can smell it in the air. It's actually a little bit um, in the air. It's a little bit medicinal. It's reminding me of, oh, what's it called? It's a pink substance that you put on cuts and abrasions. And it smells really nice. Is it germaline? I'm thinking of germaline. Now, I'm only talking about it in the air at the moment. I've not put it up to my nose yet because I think... I think I can still smell quite a bit of alcohol, so I'm just giving it a little second to, to dissipate. Um, ghee like the butter, mauve, ghee mauve, ghee mauve, ghee mauve, or oh, is it ghee mauve, ghee mauve. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay, let's smell it. Yeah, so there's a bit of sharpness to start with and it is a little bit a little bit medicinal it's making me think of germaline um which i by the way used to love the smell of it's not a bad thing um it's it is reminding me a little bit of of a very very beautiful fragrance that i love it's not the same but it has some elements in common with Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie from Guerlain. Now this of course is a marshmallow fragrance, not a sugared almond fragrance, that's the other one. However, oh isn't there, no, yeah, Drag A is the sugared almond. However, I'm getting sort of elements of more of a sharp, bitter, almond-like scent. This doesn't smell like a fluffy, soft marshmallow. This isn't the marshmallow note from Killian's Love Don't Be Shy at the moment. It's got a sharpness to it. Um, I think there's possibly orange blossom in here, it, but not to any syrupy, thick degree, more the sharper side of orange blossom. Could even be, um, I don't think it's neroli. It doesn't have any bitter greenery to it. But it's almost like a sugared orange blossom. It's quite a sharpness and there's probably a little bit of citrus in here as well. What is this ghee butter, says Ridge? <laughs> um, yeah, what I'm liking about this is it does smell like a proper perfume. It doesn't smell like you've just dived into a, a tub of marshmallows. It's... um. It's got florals, it's got a little bit of citrus, and it's got sweetness, but it's quite sharp at the moment. Which isn't a bad thing, it's not screechy sharp, but it's definitely got a sharpness to it, like you can get from um, orange blossomy type scents. says no drama it's all subjective tried my second initio today uh, are they all just even more expensive parfums de Marley's? not that there's anything up with parfum de Marley. um i don't know if i've tried any initio i might have a sample of something somewhere um Uh, Mia says, uh, Danielle, Madeleine is lovely, first chestnut dominant fragrance I have. And we're talking about putting ghee in coffee. Danielle puts, uh, has used ghee in her coffee. It's smooth and delish. 
I used to, I did use some ghee once when I really got into Indian cooking. I bought a big pot of ghee butter. <laughs> um, so yes, gimmov gim is really nice. I'm really impressed. It doesn't just smell like a gourmand, it smells like a proper perfume. I think Lizzie Bean and John, I think you'll probably like this. Even though Lizzie's not into the white florals so much, I think because you like Le Plou Beaujour de Mavet, I think you'll probably like this. So we will move on and try another one on the wrist. So we'll stick with uh, Reminiscence and we'll go for the Sugared Almond one now, Drague. And oh, we're going to have to take this tape off to release the quite like the tape let's move it move it round there Robert Robert is here uh, their magnetic collection has some lovely animalic scents and can be found at a discount too um, are we talking about Initio Robert or Lancome or something else um, drag A we'll pop that on the wrist and we'll go further down the wrist to keep it away from the marshmallow on the other bit of my hand. So there we go, drag A. <laughs> Rich says, Luwak coffee comes out of a cat's bullet. Heather's here, she says, hello Claire and all of you. Hey Heather. Um, And John says, and Lizzie Bet loves Love Don't Be Shy, biggest shock of 2021. <laughs> if that's the biggest shock of 2021, then I think we're all doing okay. Let's hope that is. Mary Beth says, I heard more marshmallow is good. I heard that. I remember really trying to track it down a long time ago, and then I sort of gave up. Um, Robert was talking about Initio. Okay. Brandon says, Claire is the sweetest one in that room. I am. I'm so sweet right now. Um... Lizzie Bean, I'll send you a sample, um, if I remember. <laughs> right then, let's have a sniff of this drag A's now that it's, um, wow. That's really, okay, that's really sweet and really almondy. It's powdery, very sweet almond, so it's like a combination of so in perfumery, there's an ingredient, it's a, an aroma chemical that smells like marzipan. And I've forgotten what it's called. And it smells really nice. It's quite intense and it doesn't last very long. It's very volatile. And I think that's in here. And I also think it wouldn't surprise me if there's heliotrope as well. Heliotrope is that floral almondy scent. It smells like a combination of both. could almost yeah it smells like marzipan it smells more almondy than a sugared almond this might be too sweet may it might be too almondy even for me it's very intensely marzipan almond marzipan and then maybe some extra crushed real almonds a little bit, I guess, a little bit Play-Doh like as well. You know, Play-Doh, doll's heads, that kind of thing. To me, this is more of a novelty of fragrance. So where Grimoire, where, where do we put that now? Oh my God. No, that's the Miller Harris. That's Petetra. The Grimoire. Yes, it smells like a gourmand, but it still does smell like a perfume. And it does remind me it, it, more so now of Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie from Guerlain, which is very, very expensive and hard to find. It reminds me of that, which is amazing. However, the Drag A is hyper sweet. It is calming down though already. It's, it's getting better. It was too sweet. 
now it's softening. It's fluffy, almost, is it musky? I don't know if musky is the right word. But it's got that cloud-like feel. Cloud-like, fluffy, powdery marsh, not marshmallow, marzipan. Almond, almost almond, not quite biscuity, but almost biscuity. It's improving, itchy face. It's improving. It's, if you just if you went into a shop and said, "Oh, that's interesting. Let's spray that," you'd smell it and go, "Bloody hell, that's sugary sweet. My teeth are falling out." But it does calm down quite quickly. But I'd prefer. <laughs> I do prefer the grim. Guimauve, personally, but this is improving very quickly. So that is the Dragaze. Now, how much room on my skin do I have? Um, so the next one is Miller Harris Sublime or Sublime Blossom. And Let me just catch up with your comments. I missed some. Is it Renaissance or Reminiscence? I thought it was Reminiscence. You, a couple of you are saying Renaissance. Um, we'll have to check that because I've uh, tagged Reminiscence on Instagram. <laughs> um, not that any of them will pay any attention. Um, Rhonda says, does it smell like Lancome Drag 8? No. The Lancome is really subtle and musky and much less sweet from memory. And this is quite intense. Uh, yeah, intense, sweet. Less musky and clean, more on the heavy kind of gourmand elements. Um, And Mary Beth says, I tried to get La Madeleine, but it's discontinued. They've only just released it. If we're talking about the Mask Milano Madeleine, then that is only just being released. Unless you're talking about Tender Madeleine, then that might have been discontinued. That's been out a long time. But apparently they have quite similar notes. And uh, Gabby is here. Hey, Gabby. And the Fragmentation. And Truth Within says, that sounds so yum, need more almond frags. And Light of Joy, I love the smell of marzipan. I also like Play-Doh smells I get from some perfumes. Well, you should uh, definitely try that then. And it's the uh, Lizzie Bean, it is the Drague. So it's, uh, I think it's reminiscence, Drague, so sugared almond. Katrine is here. Hi, uh, hi, Katrine. Just bought psychedelic love from Initio. Sweet heliotrope, kind of nice. Okay, glad you like it. Um, <laughs> John says, stop calling them doll's heads, Claire. I imagine you with a disturbed childhood playing with a massive collection of just heads. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Um, Truth within saying, I'm not turned off by Play-Doh or doll's heads gives me many irritations um, <laughs> okay Tara says okay class starting soon wish I could stay longer by all oh, bye Tara thanks for joining us and Lizzie Bean says I've always wanted to try the Renaissance gourmand line I assume the pink one would be the best I think that's the marshmallow one um, I don't know what bottle colours. I like the colour, I like the green bottle. Um, Almond for the wind says truth within. We've done marshmallow to death. <laughs> um, just having a quick read through. It's reminiscence. Okay, right. Okay, it is reminiscence. That's fine. It's easy. To, it's easy to mix mix them all up. Um, 
Just realised I'm hungry. <laughs> and time to, time to Musk Up is here. It says, hey, hey, girly. Hey, hey, time to Musk Up. And uh, Kareen says, for me to back Rouge by Fido and Smells Like Play-Doh. I remember testing that one and I really didn't get on with it. It was a bit sickly for me. And I think it was a, a, the, to, to do with the tobacco. That's what I always imagined was, was why I didn't really like it. Um, uh, Light of Joy says, speaking of almonds, have you had a chance to smell the new Le Petit Robe Noir Nectar? No, I am really keen to try that one. It sounds amazing with a note of macarons. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay then, right, I think I'm all caught up. So we've got here Sublime Blossom by Mila Harris. So this one's not a gourmand, I don't think. Um, more of a floral, but it might have a bit of sweetness, I think. It might have sort of like honey or something. I can't really remember, but um, it's been getting a lot of love. As I said earlier, I can't get this, um, I can't get the bit of, let's see if I can just, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to get the thing off that protects it or just push it down. Um, it's been getting a lot of love in the Facebook groups because it's, it's currently on offer in TK Maxx, really cheap, uh, about £25 for the 50 mil. And quite a few people have said that the dry down is stunning. They don't necessarily love the opening, but they really love the dry down. And it's, uh, I understand it to be Bertrand du Chauffeur as well. Right, where are we? We've got Poirier Dune Soir there, Petit Petetra there. So we're gonna go up here with Sublime Bo Blossom. So what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm gonna spray my favorite all around here. Oh, okay, I can see why the, the opening might be challenging. Smells like, kind of like a bitter lemonade, like, um, you know that, cloudy lemonade old-fashioned bitter lemonade then with some herbs added kind of green almost grassy also feels a bit I don't know how why I'm saying it watercolory and I don't know why because that's not I mean how does that even but that's what's coming to my head watercolory um It's really unusual and I don't dislike it. Um, it's definitely a green, but not in a dark leaf forest green, more of a pale green, dew drops on grass, wet grass, a little bit of herbs, lemonade, cloudy bitter lemonade. So it's bitter. Watery. I think I'm saying watercolour because I'm, I'm picturing like a really lovely impressionism kind of watercolour-y scene and it is uh, kind of watery, not in a weak way, not watered down but I guess I'm picturing a, a beautiful pond, a, maybe a scene like an impressionism watercolour scene with a pond and lots of different colours, lots of green, different shades of green and lots of different coloured flowers. Everything's very calm, serene. You know how a, a calm pond can really be quite calming to sit near? Where the hell am I getting all of that? I don't even know. I, I really like this. And it's not even at the bit that everyone else likes yet. It definitely has a tang. It's got a tang. I said bitter. Bitter might be not quite right. It's not really like, it's not like bitter, sharp, sour, but it has got a real tang to it, like limes, um, maybe unripened, limey tang. Yeah, it's definitely limey to me. Limey, but there's this creamy element, not in a 
chantilly you know not vanilla cream but a, just a creamy texture really unusual i genuinely really like it and i haven't smelled anything like this in a long time so it might be um if it's still on tk maxx i might be tempted claude monet like yes nick um, i'm definitely i'm picturing monet type um pictures okay right we're talking about nutella i think i miss i've missed a few comments here um i actually spooned a little bit of chocolate spread into my mouth earlier and it was the cadbury chocolate spread um Danielle says, I spoon Nutella and peanut butter for afternoon snacks. Can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I need to start watching what I eat again. First of all, I feel like I'm gaining weight. And also I've got um, kind of rash-like spots all over my tummy area. And yeah, so I think it's too much sugar probably. Anywho, didn't need to know that, did you? <laughs> um, just missed some comments. And Rummy, Rummy says, Hi Claire, have you tried Zerge of Italica and Lyra? Uh, yes, I have sampled Lyra. I mean, I've, I had a sample of Lyra. Um, really enjoyed that. Although... I also then had a bottle of Tender Madeleine, which is kind of a dupe for it. I don't know if it's intentional or not. And they were pretty similar, really close. So to me, it wasn't ever worth owning Lyra. I remember getting a compliment when I wore Lyra and it being a very beautiful caramelly vanilla dry down. I don't always love citruses because it's got a blood orange note, hasn't it? And I sometimes don't necessarily enjoy citruses when they're combined with... Um, vanilla -y notes I don't know why and I think that so I wasn't madly in love with Lyra but I did think it was a beautiful fragrance uh, Scotty Bean is here hey Scott uh, Gabby says love your descriptions Claire you are so knowledgeable thank you um, don't know what that what John's saying it's not what Claire Pear. I'm, I'm probably behind, so I do apologise. Um, and uh, Italica, I can't really remember. I probably have, but I don't recall it. So we'll just say no. <laughs> um, Time to musk up says, let's leave a like for the young lady. Well, thank you very much, Time to musk up. Sweetie! So <laughs> here she comes. I don't knock all my perfumes over, darling. It's like every single time, isn't it? Um, thank you. Thank you for liking. And let's have a little read. Tracy says, can't have peanuts. Oh, where's it gone? I missed your bloody comments just gone. I know why, Tracy, but I'll, I'll read it out. Hang on. Sweetie. Come here, come on. There we go. There we go. That's it. You're getting in the way, sweetie. Um, you might be able to hear a purring in a second. Um, oh, here we are. Tracy says, can't have peanuts in the house. Uh, so sesame and date spread is a replacement here. Miss peanut butter, though. How is the sesame? I quite like um, sesame products. I know they're quite heavy in fat, aren't they? Um, that is it Hal halva i think it's a greek or um my dad's girlfriend who is iran from iran no she's she's a born in armenia grew up in iran and i tried halva at their place and it was delicious like i could just eat that stuff straight out of the pot amazing um We've all gained weight, says Gabby, lockdown diet, yeah. Plus it's difficult to get out and do much exercise when it's like it is out there. It's, um, it's, I walked to the shop and back 
and it's quite treacherous. It's difficult not to fall over. Karine's just finished her hazelnut muffins with chocolate chips. Very nice. Um, Light of Joy says, good to know I've wanted to try Tender Madeleine. It's, it's a really good fragrance, an absolute bargain. Really nice gourmand with a bit of a citrus touch in the opening, really. Uh, Brenda McDonald says, wearing Wicked Good. Hi, Brenda. I've heard that's a beautiful chocolate creation. Um, should I try and get Sweetie to purr on my microphone? Oh, I don't know if you heard that. Sesame paste is lovely, says Lizzie. It's got a name, can't remember. Um, this one's quite sugary. This halva is H A. That's something. Something's going on on my roof. H A L V A, I believe. Um, I think it's just a bit of snow falling on it. Um, yeah, it's like a sugar. It's a sugary. What's it like? It's oily, sugary, fatty, sweet. It's amazing. And Mary Beth's going to make some banana bread. Very nice. And Light of Joy says, I need to get back to the gym. Certainly have my own lockdown weight. Tamarind, no. It's not tamarind. That's that sticky, um, fruity stuff. Uh, Chinese food, isn't it? Uh, or Thai. Um, Time to Musk Up says, it's freezing in New York. Just threw a garbage bag on and walk up and down with my stairs. Does the job. My mum used to do that, to put um, wrap herself up in plastic bags to try and sweat the fat off. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Nisky Pisky says, I'm almost at my fattest ever after carb COVID. <laughs> Ange is here, 50 cents UK. Hey, Ange. She says, hello, all. Um, a light of joy says that purring is so relaxing, kind of like my dogs snoring. Yeah. I love it when you hear animals snoring around the house. Like you, you just suddenly realise you're sitting in a quiet room that there's this soft, rhythmic, <sighs> sort of snorry noises. Why is it cute when animals snore and it's absolutely the opposite when humans snore? Um, Mary Beth says, Panna Champagne Truffle sounds delicious. Yeah, I love that one. Um, Robert says we used to do that to make weight for kickboxing tournaments. Um, Uh, Danielle loves Pan of London, great quality. Okay, right, I think that's that. So, have we got anything else to smell? Let me have a look. Do you want me to go back to everything? So, I think we've got six things on. Have we got six things on? No, there must be one more. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, the last one, I already know it, is Bois d'Armond. So, it's Van Cleef and Arpels, you know, from their higher-end line, like the Orchidée Vanille, uh, that line. Oh, put that one. Didn't put anything up here, did I? No pop that one up here so I know this one I did review it from I had got through a couple of samples really enjoyed it I just wasn't quite sure if I needed it and as hello what, what are you doing sweetie are you gonna try and go behind me she's actually gonna knock so there's a wire on my mic between my mic and my phone and the cat has previously if you might have been there at the live when she managed to pull everything down because she got caught up in it and then jumped off. So we'll try and avoid that happening today, won't we, sweetie? Oh, bless you. So, yeah, Bois d'Armond means woods of almond. And it is a really gorgeous. To me, it smells marshmallowy. So if Grimoire, Guimauve, had smelt like this, I wouldn't have been that surprised. So this smells mildly almondy, but it's not as almondy as you might expect. It's not as almondy as Dragay. 
which is really gone. So go back, go to drag A. I'm not loving drag A. It's powdery, soft marzipan. It's it's very. It feels very very linear. Now I don't know obviously how it's going to change on my skin, but there's nothing else really to it. It's just almost like pure marzipan. It started off super, super sharp and sweet and it has mellowed out, but it's not really got anything else to it. So it could be a layering type fragrance, but for me it's, it is, has no real place. In, I don't need it, you know, it's just, it's just not quite a love for me whereas the Bois d'Amon's got a lot more going on it's slight ever so slight hint of a of a a sweet smoky element to it with a soft marshmallow a hint of almond and I think there's probably a little bit of rose but often when I smell something like a marshmallow type note, I usually associate it with rose automatically because I think marshmallows do have a little hint of a rosiness to them. I really like this. Bois d'Armand. It's just got more balance. So it's got sweet, sweet and non-sweet notes intermingling. So that it's it's not too sweet. It's got a subtle tea to it. It's not a big heavy full on fragrance. I think it's this could almost be and it and I remember thinking this before. There she goes. I remember thinking this before. It could almost be uh, oh what was I gonna say? Maison Francis Kirk de Jeanne's Baccarat Rouge au légère, like a light version and a less aroma chemical type version of it. I think if you like that, if you like the almondy facet, so perhaps if you like the extract over the EDP and you wanted something a little lighter, a little less invasive, because let's face it, the extract is very invasive or even the EDP, the, the big fragrances are very loud. Um, if you wanted a lighter and less less heavy on the sugary elements, I don't know if the sugar is coming from the same type of ingredients. I, I think there might be a little tiny bit of that, but this is more softer, marshmallowy rather than burnt sugar. But I do think if you have a fondness for Baccarat Rouge, then maybe do yourself a favor and try this because it's really really nice but it's more versatile whereas i really so lizzie bean sent me a decant of the extract of baccarat rouge and i love it but for me it's a kind of a guilty pleasure and my boyfriend's not that keen on it and it's very loud so it doesn't feel that versatile so i tend to wear it just for me around the house when i'm on my own whereas this Van Cleef & Arpel's Bois d'Armond is just much more, it's, it's lighter. It still has the sim, very similar elements, but in a lighter way. What's going on? It's a bit of bird activity in the garden. And so a little quick look at your... Um, Truth Within says, I was, talk, I was talking to Time to Musk Up. Okay, I'll let you talk to each other. Uh, Lizzie says this is sounding more and more lovely. Uh, 50 cents. Ange says, is it anything like Killian Princess? I've only tried the Princess Rose. It might have some similarities. I think if you like that, you'll like this, I would say. And uh, Mary Beth says, sounds like it has more depth than just Marshmallow. Yeah, it's got, it's got more going on with it and I don't think it's supposed to be a marshmallow scent but it, it smells marshmallowy to me um. Um. 
<laughs> Nick says um, Baccarat Rouge EDP is one of the most cloyingly synthetic fragrances I've ever tried. I can totally understand that. I'd, I'd say, yeah, I think it is very heavily synthetic and pretty cloying, but for some reason quite addictive, although the extract has my heart a lot more. Um, John says, Nick, I'm with you on that. Uh, Danielle says, you can get Grim Guimauve for 50 on Strawberry Net with free shipping. I have to say, it has changed. And I'm not loving Grim Guimauve as much as I was. It's got almost a little bit soapy. So it was reminding me of Le Plus Beaujolais de Ma Vie, which is a gorgeous sugared almond, slightly orange blossom, marshmallow, sh uh, powdered sugar, musk kind of scent. And it was reminding me of some elements of that. But now, I'm guessing it is orange blossom. I'll have to look it up. But it's gone, the florals have gone soapy. And it's still sweet. I think it's just birds running around. The florals are, um, yeah, uh, kind of soapy. And it's, I, I still, it still feels like it's kind of marshmallowy, or at least gourmandy in some element, but um. I'm just not really loving it anymore. Which just goes to show how things can really change on your skin. And had I just smelt it up to the point of not, you know, before I just re-smelled it, I would have been like, yeah, I'd quite like to have that. But now I don't think I'd wear this because it's a bit too soapy. Yeah. So, mm, I have changed my mind about Gimov. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. It's just gone a bit soapy, which I'm not really loving. Cat hair. Um, so there's an update on Gimov. Um, uh, Heaven, no, it's not the De Noel one. I think that's, is that Parlemoir de Parfum? Which I think I have a sample of somewhere. And I remember trying it quite liking it but finding it a little bit generic something that's been done before quite a few times um the bottle is so valentine's vibe yes totally so romantic looking aren't they um karine says my favorite marshmallow one is madeleine by oh mademoiselle by golan floral not too sweet the marshmallow note is more subtle not too much in your face yes that is a good one just a bit too green in the opening for me, that galbanum note, um, which doesn't hang around too long. But in, I did have a bottle, but I ended up selling it because even though it didn't hang around too long, I guess I just want to smell, I want it to smell good all the way through it. So yeah, um, for me and for my taste. Um, okay, so Guimauve. It's just got a little bit soapy for my taste. Um, Wild Diamond, absolutely love. Really great. Um, a slightly smoky, slightly woodsy, slight, uh, sweet, qu quite sweet, but not too sweet. It's quite sweet. You know, on a, on a scale of one to 10, how sweet is it? It's about a seven and a half or an eight. But it has a lightness and airiness so I think that's probably my favorite which we, and it's the one that I already know but we're going to go back now to Miller Harris so the Poirier Dune Soir unfortunately is a thumbs down t for me still too much the Ambroxan is very heavy if it is Ambroxan it's very heavy it's to me, it drowns everything out. That's because I can be 
hypersensitive to it, as you know. Um, you can still smell a fresh pear in there. If, if only you could just take that ambroxin away, it would just be so much nicer. Unfortunately, that ruins it for me. If you if you don't mind ambroxin, um, you, you might like it, but for me, it's it's a it's a no. Okay, so then where do we go? Patetra, Lancome Patetra. That's the first one that we sprayed. It's very light, and I did three sprays. I am overwhelming myself. To be fair. I am overwhelming myself with stuff, so it might just be my nose now. It's like, um, I don't know if there's something like a cinnamon in here. Or rhubarb. I know they're two completely different things, but I'm getting a twangy element. A slight twang like you would get sometimes from a, uh, an aspect of cinnamon, sometimes from rhubarb or something else, but a twang. A clean musk. A slightly savoury, almost rice-like note. This is unusual and I don't know that I'm loving it. Yeah, it's reminded me a little bit of that Tio Carbonell, one of the French ones, the one that has the rice note in it. But it's quite nice. But it's unusual. I need to give this a full wearing. I don't, I, I neither, I, I like it. It's not a love at the moment. It's not a dislike. Uh, so that is Patetra. That was the first one I sprayed on my wrist. Let's just quickly check your comments, there's a few. Quickly um, coming through. Uh, Karine says she loves Guimauve de Noel too. Quite close to love, don't be shy, but more floral and subtle, bit less sugary sweet. I will retry that, I kind of made my mind up quite uh, quickly on that one, I remember. Um, LDBS reminds me of Love and Crime. LDBS. I can't I don't know what that one is now, I can't think. Um Mary Beth says Ambroxin seems to take over in most fragrances I have tried. I think when you if you are slightly sensitive to it or you, you know you just know that you don't love it then that's it, it's, it's quite pervasive, isn't it? I mean, it lasts forever and um, it can be, if, if you find it annoying, then it can be very annoying. <laughs> um, hey, Hilary, she says, good morning. Hey, Hills. Um, uh, Karine says, good evening. <laughs> Je ne sais quoi, says Yara. Oh, that's the Tia Cabanel with the rice note. Yeah, so that, there's something about that that's reminding me of Patetra from Lancome. Only ever so slightly. They're, they're not that similar. Um, oh, and uh, Karine said the same. Je ne sais quoi. Um, Love, don't be shy is the LDBS. Okay, of course. And Ollie's mum said that. Hey, Ollie's mum. Um... Okay, right, I think I'm caught up. So, um, yeah, so I've, I've t let's, let's go back to the others. So, yeah, Dragaze is, is, is a little bit lit. It's just too linear. It's just very, very much, not flat as such, but it's just not doing much, you know? It's just a, kind of like a slightly sugary, much more mellow marzipan thing now. Not just marzipan, it is balanced with something that's not as sweet. Uh, almost like a bit of cedar or something like that. Yeah, Grimoire's 
gone a bit soapy. I'm not loving it anymore. <laughs> um, and then the Miller Harris Sublime Blossom. Hmm, I've changed my mind about that as well, I think. So apparently it's a dry down that it gets really lovely. Now I enjoyed the opening and I sort of described, you know, like watercolours, very serene, quite green, but in a sort of um, fresh, green, dewy, grassy kind of way. Um, it's now a little bit bitter. And it was bitter to start with. It had that sort of bitter lemonade kind of feel. And now I don't know if it's more bitter, more green. Let me think. Um, fragrances like Francesca Bianchi Etruscan Water ball we're very vague ball ballparking now it's not that similar but if you like that you might like this this needs time there's like a creamy cleanness going on in here like maybe those soapy aldehydes that I thought might be in Protectra in the opening. So it's interesting. I need to wait and see what happens with that, I think, because it gets a lot of a lot of love for the dry down. I don't think we're there yet. Um. Um, time to musk up says, Hey Smurfy, do you like bald eye freak by by radio. I'm guessing you mean Baldaf Freak, and I'm pretty sure I don't because isn't that the um, Marigold fragrance of Tagets? And that's a note I really don't like in fragrance, if I remember correctly. And I did, I have tried it, and I'm pretty sure I didn't really like it, but I know that it gets a lot of love. Um, Nick says, I think soapy when well done, or done well, can smell really good. Usually people use that term to undermine a fragrance nowadays. Any soapy fragrances you enjoy? I don't mind so, sort of a soapy element to a fragrance, but it. I don't know why sometimes... I mean, I guess soapy can often literally just be based on your memory of smelling particular soaps and where you brought up, in what country will affect whether something smells soapy to you or not, I think. Um, and, I mean, this is still changing. Chimoise is still changing. And actually doesn't smell as soapy as it did. It's really interesting. It's not as sweet as you might expect. My tummy's rumbling. I need to get some food. Sorry about that. Um, feel like people use soapy as a way of saying it's boring. I think yeah, it's it's all probably it's all different, isn't it? Depending on your what you're used to and what you've smelled before. Sometimes I might say soapy, but I'm actually thinking of potpourri you know so something that's that makes the room smell clean um but you know how smoke how soap can smell kind of it's got that smooth creaminess to it hasn't it and that blending of particular florals that are generally used in soaps um but I wouldn't really say this is terribly soapy anymore anyway. It has a little hint of a smokiness now. Almost like a uh, incense-y kind of feel. Like a floral incense with some gourmand touches. But this orange blossom is giving a little bit of the, a clean feel, if not if not soapy, maybe soapy, I don't really know. It's an interesting fragrance for sure, probably one of the most interesting we've tried here, which I wasn't expecting because it's just called 
marshmallow or the French version of marshmallow. So um, you wouldn't expect that to be that interesting. Like you would expect it to be quite linear. Heather says, I have paper soap by Jay Scent. I think I remember you talking about that one, Heather. And Mary Beth says, I think Twilly by Hermes smells like expensive French soap. And I think um, ginger in particular, I, I've, uh, a perfumer once said to me that ginger in perfumery is very difficult to use and it can turn things quite soapy. And Margie says, I also think soap can be different for different people based on the soaps they've used in the past. I also think it's the scent memory thing. Yeah, for sure. And I think that goes for many different things. Uh, even You could even say with chocolate, if you, if you grew up in a certain country where the chocolate's very different to how it is uh, elsewhere, if you grew up only eating very dark chocolate, um, but I mean, that's kind of vague, but anything really from memory, people talk about, oh, it smells a bit like, reminds me of toilet air freshener. Well, here in the UK, we would use certain brands, certain types of spray aerosols, but over in another country, somewhere in Europe, maybe they would probably use different types of things, different brands, different products. So everything is kind of based on memory to a degree. My tummy's really grumbling, I'm so sorry. Heather says Mugla Cologne is like a freshly showered scent, not soapy. Some floral scents can come off soapy too, says Margie. And Nick says uh, aldehyde smell of soap sometimes as well. Yes, they definitely do. And Karine says, uh, here in France, it was the Lang Ylang for toilet spray. So I have some issues with that note sometimes. Well, that makes sense. And um, here in the UK, often bleaches were scented with pine. A lot of, a lot of um, toilet scented products for cleaning and air freshening were pine scented. And I just do not enjoy pine scents, pine notes in fragrances because I can't get past that reminder that it smelled, it smells like what we used to put in um, down the toilet. And then, then you can have associations, you could say, well, it smells cheap because it reminds me of those cheap products. And it's not that they've used some cheap pine uh, essential oil, it is simply that you're, you're thinking to how you associate that scent and a scent that you spray in the air to hide the smell of what, what people have produced or that you throw down the toilet and flush away is going to be not only a reminder of, of toilets in general but also it's going to make you think cheap because you, you wouldn't just spray something cheap in the air or throw it down the toilet. So yes, there we go. Um, so all in all, everything that I've smelt today, my favorite is the Van Cleef and Arpels Bois d'Armond. I find it really addictive. So that's the one I'm gonna wear. Bois d'Armond. And hopefully I will um, be able to decide by the time I've used up, I've just got a five mil, so that's not a full uh, 10 mil, that's a five mil decant. Um, Hopefully by the time I've used up five mils, I will know whether I really want to own a full bottle or not. But, ooh, so strong, so strong. I do really love it though. So I'm very happy to be able to retest that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna call it quits in a second because I need to get some food and fancy my throat's really dry. I should have brought a drink over here. And yeah, I might have a coffee. So yes, um, I think I'm pretty much done. Thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, I'm just gonna end it now because I'm starving. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's it really. And 
Oh, my son, my, no, my tummy's grumbling, so I need to go before it keeps grumbling at you all. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all very soon. I will probably have a video up on my channel in the next day or two. I'm going to do, I guess I should do a Valentine's video, and it's kind of like the done thing, isn't it? And I'm also going to do a Most Worn Winter Fragrances video, so I might record those today if I've got the energy, if not, maybe tomorrow. But that's it then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.